the alpha thingy. It's a Node.js ORM for everything DB. Uh, if you don't use Node.js, it should still be interesting. So like, just try to stay focused. Uh, if you use Node.js, it's going to be really awesome. So OK, let's go. So I'm going to talk first a bit about RethinkDB. I'm not going to present everything, just like the key features that like make Thinky what it is. Um, the first one is like RethinkDB is like schemaless. So what I used to say is that like schemaless databases, I kind of like done many type languages. Some people like love it, some people hate it, but at the end of the day, you get things done faster. Like you don't have to like open a MySQL shell, uh, run like an alter command that you don't know the syntax of, you can just like update your schema. Like it's free and it's easy. Um, then, we think DB is like a really nice query language, so it's embedded in your language. So, for example, if you use Node.js, your query is just plain JavaScript. There's no like SQL string to build, like strings to concatenate, um, escape things to avoid like SQL injection. It's just like JavaScript. You don't have like JSON objects to build to, like in like MongoDB, where you have like to be use like special keys with like a dollar sign. And you just have like a plain, simple, chainable query language. So like for example, here I just get all my users. I get one of them with the ID six, seven, something, something. And I update the age. I pass like the fit age and the value of 28. What's like really, really cool too is like it gets like all the power from like JavaScript. And what it does is like it can take like function to update. So if you want to increment the age of a user, you can just pass a function. The function is just, just going to be like serialized, sent to the server. The server is going to do the thing and just send you back like what you want. So that's like one of the really cool stuff I think like of everything. So then like it has joints. So when people talk about like NoSQL databases, they think like key value stores like MongoDB and they don't have joints. They have like nested structure and it's nice if you have like a has one belongs to relation. It's really nice if you have like a has many. But as soon as you have like a social network with like users have being friends with others, then like things break. Like you can try to use like nested arrays, but it's going to be like a pain because things are going to be redundant. You need to like pull data, um, do like client side run. It's slow and it's just a pain to use basically. So then there are like other cool stuff like shard replicate with a few clicks on a nice web UI. You have change feed that Michael talked about. Um, I'm maybe going to talk about that later. So what does Thinky do? Uh, well, it creates models, right? Um, normal stuff. You can validate your data because it's not because like your database is like schemaless that like you just throw like random bits inside. You have like a schema just like it's going to change really fast. Sometimes like fees can be undefined, and Thinky like makes sure that like you don't forget things, or it's going to generate values if you add a new field. And it has like a kind of like smart save method that like going to call like insert update depending on like what kind of document you have. And so what about the API? It's kind of like the most like important part, I think. Um, so there's someone who tweeted something I think like pretty interesting. He said like RethinkDB basically ship with like a built-in ORM. Um, so RethinkDB doesn't ship with a built-in ORM. Thinky is a ORM. Um, but what is so what he means here is that like because the query language is really nice, you don't have like this string stuff to concatenate and things. Basically, you don't really feel the need to to have like an ORM. And because the API is really good, what Thinky does is that it just like provides the same API. And what's really interesting is that by being the same API, it just like copies the API. So what it does here in Thinky is like term is like the driver like um, function. It's just going to like, sorry, object is just going to iterate on it and copy all the function is like a query prototype that is like Thinky stuff. So that's like about 10 lines of code, I think. And that's like more than 100 method created in three. So like, it's like pretty easy to do. That's also like something pretty interesting because like, if you don't want to use Thinky for like whatever reason, you need something like lighter, you can just create your own class and just like kind of like monkey patch stuff the same way here. And you get like all the pow power of like recall. So then like because everything based joins, you can define relations, that relations that work. Um, so like has one belongs to, has many, has and belongs to many. Um, like the four like relations you have, for example, in active record. And what you do at the end is that you create like two models, like post offer. Um, you said like a post belong to an offer and you have like a special command name like get join. And what it do for you, it just like get the joint document, all of them. And what's really nice here is that like, you don't have to remember what foreign key you used. You just write once, like what's the foreign key. So like, the, le the left key here is the ID offer, the right key is ID. 
and you do that once in one file somewhere, then you can forget it. You just remember that a post belongs to one of us and Finky is going to do the rest. Then there are like more stuff that like Finky does. Um, the whole point is like to make things easier. So it manages like a connection pool. So in JavaScript, it's asynchronous, it's nice, but it's kind of a pain when you have to add listener and stuff. So here, like you never see a connection. You just have like one line for query. It's one command. You get like one asynchronous operation, just one. Um, it creates tables for you, and it can create indexes for joins to make sure that they're like efficient, they're fast, and everything works fine. So what's really nice too is thinkies can be customized, and basically like anything can be like take a like a generic function. For example, for validation for a feed, you can say like. I'm giving you this function and call it like every time you want to validate the feed. So what you can do is like just import validator, for example, which is like another package, really nice. And you can use like is email, which is a nice function that has like a big regex that tests like all the numbered names, uh, make sure that everything is like a genuine email. You can also create like special method to generate fields. Like if you want to add a field like is like a user an adult, right? Well, you can set a default to false, just a value. You can say like, well, you can check if there's a birth date. If there's one, like check how old is it. Like if the guy is more than 18, set it to true, I'll set it to false. You have like hooks that you have like in other like RM, like before events like saving, validating, and such. And the last part that is like really, really nice is that you can create your, like your own methods. So it's not really method, it's more like aliases. But um, here, for example, if you have like users, you never want really to display like the password or like the hash password, right? or like the email most of the time. So what you can do is just define like a method named get playback that is basically just going to remove the password and the email. And this thing is get sent to the server. So like you never see like the password like on the network. It like never comes. So it's uh, safer and it's like easier to use. So now like Finky is like pretty stable. It works fine. Uh, I hope so. Many people use it and like companies use it too. Um, it has like a few thousand dollars every month. Uh, I don't know how many bots there are, but like basically it still works. Uh, people do a, a decent am amount of pull requests, so it's pretty cool. And the next feature that is going to come is going to be change feed. That's something I was waiting for, like point change feed, where what you want, for example, is like we want to display the profile of like someone, and you want something to be like up to date. So here, what you do is like you get like your socket IO, your socket.js connection, and you just run one query, you get your feed and you just bind the two of them. And then like, if the connection goes down, the feed like, get closed. If the feed get closed, it can restart. And you can do like, you can make sure that nothing leaks and it still works, which is really cool. So hopefully I'm going to do that in like two, three days. And so shortcut is like, think it's just sugar. It's really light. Um, it doesn't do much. It does a lot of things, mostly related to like relations, but like the API is like recorded. Really like, so. I just stole the stuff. Um, think you take care of like all the boring stuff, which make like code easier, and it can be like still customized, so it should fit like many many needs. And that's about it. So.